Welcome to the short executive knowledge lecture on topic three, paper nine of the SFC licensing exams. This topic covers equity derivatives, and you can see on the screen uh, the different subjects. So we start with uh, the different exchange traded equity derivatives that exist and are traded in Hong Kong. We'll then look at warrants, specifically equity warrants and derivative warrants. Uh, over the counter equity derivatives are looked at as our new structured products. And then we consider the pricing of equity derivatives and using equity derivatives to hedge positions. And we finish off with looking at different trading strategies uh, using equity derivatives. I will emphasize the important points to help you understand the core material you need to know to sit the exam. And as ever, a copy of the study notes you see on the screen can be downloaded from the Executive Knowledge website. And I strongly recommend that you supplement this learning with question practice. And you can find many multiple choice practice questions on paper nine topic three uh, on the examinator.online platform. Okay, let's move into the detail of topic three. Uh, and we're going to be looking at different exchange traded equity derivatives in Hong Kong. Now, why do we uh, enter into them? Specifically, uh, right at the top of page 3.3, we're considering why do we enter into futures contracts, which are, are the most popular? Um, and it's because they offer hedgers, speculators, and arbitrageurs uh, three advantages. There is capital effectiveness. You only have to post margin with futures, not the full amount of the underlying asset. So if you want to gain on uh, a movement in the price of the asset, uh, then you only have to put margin forward. You don't have to pay the full amount. Cost effectiveness, the commission uh, that you pay to buy sell futures, relatively low compared to stock transaction commission. And there is guaranteed settlement through the clearinghouse. Uh, futures trades are settled and guaranteed by the futures clearinghouse through what we call novation. Okay, let's start with Hang Seng Index Futures. We'll consider uh, in each case how they're settled and what the underlying instrument is. And as I've alluded to already, uh, Hang Seng Index Futures, the most popular futures contract that is traded in Hong Kong. Global fund managers use the Hang Seng Index futures uh, and options to hedge uh, or speculate the direction of the Hong Kong market. Now, please note it's global fund managers. Um, retail investors do not use these Hang Seng Index futures. They will use many Hang Seng Index futures or options that we're going to come to in a moment. Now, the Hang Seng Index futures are cash settled and the underlying instrument is the Hang Seng Index. We also have Hang Seng Index options. They are cash settled European style options. That means that they're settled uh, on the expiry date and not before. The underlying instrument, again, the Hang Seng Index, and they uh, offer flexibility with regard to strike price and expiry days and they're exchange traded, obviously. Many Hang Seng uh, index futures options are attractive for retail investors. Uh, they're multiple, the cost is $10 instead of $50 per index uh, point. Uh, so they have a cash value of one fifth uh, of that for Hang Seng index futures. They are cash settled and again, underlying instruments, the Hang Seng index. So please remember Hang Seng index futures for fund managers and the mini Hang Seng index futures and options for the retail investor. And that can be highlighted in uh, a question. The next uh, derivative Hang Seng China enterprise index futures and options. Uh, and these have been uh, offered to the market uh, to meet growing needs of investors that are interested in China securities. They are European style options. They're cash settled and the contract multiplier is $50 per index point. The mini 
uh, equivalent of these futures again have a contract multiplier of ten dollars that we saw with the mini Hang Seng index. Uh, underlying instrument is the this Hang Seng China Enterprises index, uh, and that reflects overall performance of mainland securities listed in Hong Kong. And in the material, they specifically refer to eight shares. Those are shares that are issued in Hong Kong for companies incorporated in China. That's the main point. Red chips and P chips, the companies are not incorporated in China and a common uh, jurisdiction for incorporation in Hong Kong is Cayman Islands uh, and also Hong Kong itself. And the red chips, the mainland securities have at least 30% shareholding directly held either by mainland entities or companies controlled by mainland entities and at least 50% sales revenues derived from the mainland. P chips, uh, companies that more than 50% sales revenue derived from mainland China, but there are neither eight shares nor are they red chips. And, and there's a chance that the detail of that index may pop up in a question. Now, uh, this index, as with many others, are compiled and calculated by the Hang Seng Indexes Company Limited, and we shorten that to HSIL that appears later. Individual stock futures um, can be traded. They are cash settled and the uh, underlying instrument obviously will be the underlying stocks. And uh, they're based on the value of a parcel of stocks. We, you can see examples we've offered here, 400 stocks for each SBC shares. China Mobile comes in at 500 and CK Hutchison at 500. Now, stock options, another equity derivative that's traded in Hong Kong, uh, settled by physical delivery of the underlying stock, uh, can be exercised any time up to expiry, so it's an American style option. Uh, these options include options on exchange traded funds, the tracker fund in Hong Kong, uh, and the underlying instrument uh, will be a quantity of the underlying asset. Dividend futures, uh, well, because the, um, the the futures and options that we looked at don't include dividends, uh, they exclude dividends, then this uh, dividend futures allows investors to hedge their dividend exposure betting on expected dividend outlook and also to be able to exploit arbitrage opportunities. And the underlying instrument, the dividend point index, which is calculated by Hang Seng Investment Limited, Index Limited, I should say, uh, measuring cumulative total cash dividend value for all constituents. Um, you know, it could pop up uh, dividend futures, but obviously the main ones uh, are the Hang Seng Index futures and options uh, and the mini Hang Seng and the China. The stock and uh, futures and options are generally referred to throughout the exam. Then we come to Hang Seng Index Volatility Index Futures, uh, and these uh, are rather this index measures expected volatility, a barometer of invest investor sentiment. Again, compiled and calculated by Hang Seng uh, Index Limited allows investors to manage volatility risk uh, in the Hang Seng Index or Hong Kong's stock market in general. And the underlying instrument uh, is the 30 calendar day expected volatility of the index and is derived from Hang Seng Index put and call options. I think that's just a little bit too much detail. I wouldn't be too concerned. We also have BRICS futures that relates to the markets in Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. We have the CES China 120 index futures, uh, and this provides a tool to manage risk exposure to China and Hong Kong stock markets um, and the underlying instrument, the CES. 120. We also have sector index futures uh, and include Hang Seng Mainland Oil and Gas, Hang Seng Mainland Banks and Hang Seng Mainland Property Index futures. Um, I wouldn't worry too much. They, they don't come up that often. MSCI Morgan Stanley uh, Capital Index. Uh, they, that was the original name. We now just shorten it to MSCI. 
Uh, they've been launched by Hong Kong Exchange and Clearing since July 2020. Underlying index are dozens of these MSCI indexes in Asia and emerging markets. And lastly, the last derivative, uh, equity derivative we're considering, uh, top of page 3.6, uh, paragraph 1.13, Hang Seng Tech index futures and options, and these uh, reflect rapid growth of technology industry, and they provide investors with management risk management tools for exposure to Hong Kong listed technology companies. They are cash settled, contract multiplier 50 Hong Kong dollars per index point, and the underlying is the Hang Seng Tech Index, tracking the performance of 30 largest Hong Kong listed technology companies. Right, so that's the first section on the different equity derivatives. Uh, now we're going to look specifically at one category that are listed, uh, and those are warrants. Now, the first equity warrant uh, in Hong Kong issued in the 1980s, and in 1989, uh, we had the first derivative warrant issued. And it's become the prevalent product. And as we'll see in some numbers that follow, uh, the volume of derivative warrants is far higher than the volume, volume of equity warrants. Now we're going to come, uh, uh, come up to the distinction between equity and derivative in a moment. But equity warrant can also be referred to as subscription warrant. Now, as with options, warrants give investor exposure to the underlying securities. Uh, they can be, in some cases, call and put options. We'll see the distinction uh, a little later. Now, both warrants and options are traded on the stock exchange of Hong Kong. However, warrants are matched using the stock exchange trading system and cleared through CCAS, Central Clearing and Settlement System, quite normal. But options, traded options, are matched using the future system. That's Hong Kong automated trading system. And they are cleared through DCAS, derivative clearing and settlement system. Now, that's a subtle difference. Uh, and it would be nasty if they examined that paper nine, but they, they could. So be aware, warrants goes through the stock exchange systems, whereas options moves over into the futures systems. Now, warrants cannot be sold short. Please remember that. That's easy to examine. So warrants cannot be sold short. And they are similar to options because they give you the right to buy the underlying asset, which is the common one. But with derivative, the, you can uh, sell. There are put warrants. And the factors affect the price, similar to options, time to expiry, market volatility, interest rates, dividends, and the current underlying price versus the excise price. And we covered all of that material in topic two under options. Now, the features of a warrant, basic components, the underlying instrument, as with options, settlement method, uh, whether it's cash or physical delivery, whether call or put, and that's with derivative warrants only. Uh, subscription warrants, it's just call. The exercise price, the strike price, um, and the conversion ratio. Uh, I said exercise style, I should have said, and that's European versus American. The underlying instrument uh, will be de derived, or rather the value of the warrants derived from the underlying instrument. Uh, and some warrants are priced over a basket portfolio of shares. Settlement method, uh, warrants can be settled by physical delivery of the underlying instrument or via cash settlement. We'll find that the vast majority of derivative warrants, it's cash settlement. Uh, call and put warrants. Uh, a call warrant, as with options, gives the holder the right, not the obligation, to buy the underlying stock at the strike price. A put option gives the holder the right, again, not the obligation, to sell underlying stock. Call warrant holders, they benefit from the upward price movement. This is exactly the same as options, whereas put warrant holders benefit from the downward trend. Now, the different styles of exercise, American or European. Well, American style warrants, as we know, can be excised any time on or before expiry date, European style on the expiry date. And in Hong Kong, derivative warrants are always European style, whereas equity warrants are American style. Please be aware of that. Hong Kong, European style with regard to derivatives uh, and usually 
equity warrants are, or subscription warrants are American style. The excise price, that's a strike price that must be paid when a warrant's exercise, same as options. And the conversion ratio, the number of warrants that must be exercised to convert into one unit of the underlying stock. Easy to write a question uh, incorporating conversion ratio with regard to warrants. So be aware of that and do the practice questions covering uh, the use of the conversion ratio. So I've given an example there. If the conversion ratio was 10 to 1, then 10 warrants must be exercised to uh, gain access to one unit of the underlying asset, one share usually. Now with the warrant market in Hong Kong, as I said earlier, it's, uh, since 1989, we've had um, both subscription and derivative warrants trading in Hong Kong. Uh, and there's uh, the warrant trading volume in Hong Kong dollar millions from 2018 to 2020. Uh, and you can see for subscription or equity warrants, uh, it's way below uh, the value of the derivative warrant trading. Uh, so you, you're more likely, I would suggest, because of that, uh, to see a question, at least one question in your exam on derivative warrants.